Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more of the Crash Bandicoot 1 playthrough. Uh, before we get started with this next level, a few things I want to talk about here. Uh, first of all, uh, at least on the Switch anyway, if you press the Z and L button, you will get the save and load feature. I'm going to go ahead and save my game because I have not done that yet. Uh, but you do have an auto save down here, which will basically continue from wherever your last, like, most recent file left off. So you have that to use, but still, I'd save your game anyway, especially if you're uh, playing with other people in your own household. So yeah, definitely uh, get in the habit of doing that, basically. Second, you can uh, switch between Crash and Coco on the map screen whenever you want. I'm going to be Crash for this video, I'll be Coco for the next video, and then so forth and so forth until we finish this game. And last but not least, you may have noticed that in the... Uh, the levels titles at the top left there in addition to the uh, clear gems you also have those uh, weird looking relic things those are called relics and they're actually involved with the time trial feature of this game where basically once you finish a level um, you can actually go back to the level and try to beat the level fast and you get relics based on how well you did you can get sapphire gold and platinum relics and it's kind of a way just to kind of compete with uh, the times the developers of the game had in mind. And just see how well you can do. That's basically what they're there for. It gives a lot of replay value to this game. It was actually a feature that was included in Crash Bandicoot 3. Uh, it wasn't in initially uh, Crash Bandicoot 1 or 2. But for uh, this version of the game, they actually added them. So I think that was actually a pretty cool thing they did. Uh, but yeah, you have that basically is something you can do in your spare time if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and move on, uh, get on with the game, so to speak. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next level, which we have is the Native Fortress. Uh, Native Fortress is a pretty long level. It's also kind of similar to a level we played earlier, the Great Gate. Kind of this uh, wooden castle vibe type of level going on. And a lot of uh, vertical platforming sections in addition to horizontal platforming sections. So yeah, that's basically what we got here. Uh, but yeah, Time Trials was definitely like a big thing that I was actually getting really hyped up about when I first kind of saw that this game was coming to Switch, or it had the possibility of coming to Switch, because, you know, I kind of like competing with people. I don't know if it's just because I've been involved with the uh, Link to the Past randomizer community or whatnot, but it, it can be fun kind of... Uh, you know, competing with other people, seeing how fast you can complete video games or sections of video games. Unfortunately for the Switch version, and I don't know if this is going to change when uh, Nintendo brings up their, like, new online, but uh, there are no leaderboards for the Switch version, which is kind of a shame. Like, I kind of expected that there would be no leaderboards, because Nintendo's never really done that. But still, like, I don't know, I thought that was a really cool feature of, like, the PlayStation 4 version, and the fact that it's not here, kind of disappointing. I really hope they make a change to that. And I think, I think they're more than capable of making that change. Because, I mean, it sounds like the uh, new Nintendo Online is going to allow for a lot more features and whatnot. But yeah, it, it's kind of dumb. Kind of dumb that it's not here initially, at least for the Switch version. Also, that was just me getting very impatient. Something that you should not do with this game whatsoever. Being impatient in Crash Bandicoot is not a good thing to do. Because you'll just end up killing yourself in numerous ways. Although, to be fair, screw these guys with the shield. They're probably one of my least favorite in enemy variants in this game. They suck, because they can literally just bounce you around like none other, and it's really, really annoying. But, what can you do? What can you do? Except just hate them and move on with your lives. So yeah, we're pretty far into the game. Well, I don't want to say far into the game, but you know, we've made it through a lot of levels. So far, though, we've only really fully completed three levels. Just because, again, the sheer volume of colored gems that you need for um, a large part of the early game levels... Just not much you can do about that, but at least, like, when you go back to the levels, you know you're going to have an easier time. I expect we'll be pr probably attempting to get our first colored gem in this video. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. 
Hopefully not terribly. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not terribly, because the first color gem level is actually pretty difficult, at least in my opinion. I suppose there is also something else I can show off when it comes to the map screen, so maybe I'll do that as well when I go back. Especially since I think this is actually the, the last level on this first island. Basically, Crash Bandicoot 1, the world map is broken up into three islands. Um, island 2 is actually very short. Well, actually no, maybe about the same length, but yeah. Essentially there's like three-thirds of the game, and we're about through the first third. Although the first third is arguably the easiest part, so there aren't exactly a lot of hard levels in that first third. Still, so it gives you kind of an idea of how much progress you're making. Also, cool little aspect of this level right here. You can just skip a huge chunk of it by following this little path behind. Another thing that I really have been having kind of a problem with this game with, and this this is something I feel like was more of an issue with uh, this remake as opposed to the original game, is for levels like this, where you kind of walk in like a side-scrolling format, you can still actually like go to the, like, as you can see, like I'm not straight in the middle, I can actually move like to the back or to the front of the platform I'm on, but due to the hitboxes of some of the enemies in this game, it can be uh, very easy to just like accidentally die or get hit by something that you can't really control. Like the turtles are a big example of that. Like they have a very weird hitbox or if you're not like straight in the middle, if you jump on them, you might actually take a hit accidentally. So just try to stay in the middle of these platforms when you're going through these levels. Just so you know, you can't get screwed over by any weird shenanigans. So you can use this to kind of wait this out a little bit. And there we go. I believe this is the last part of this level, so we're about done. But yeah, this is a pretty long level, honestly. This is about a... At least when you're, like, time trialing this level, this is about a two-minute level, so it can be pretty lengthy. Unfortunately, it's another case where you can't complete it until you have the right colored gem, so once again, I'm gonna leave another level behind us. It is kinda funny though, watching this little animation at the end, and watching Crash just get pummeled by boxes. <laughs> it's actually funny, if it gets to like, I think, 30, like, Crash will start like, laying on the ground. Like, just being completely, like, knocked out. They don't do that for Coco though, Coco just like, shields uh, herself with her laptop. But yeah, a cute little animation effect they added, pretty much. Okay, so here we have Up the Creek. This is the first normal level we can actually complete fully <laughs> in a very long time, so... That's kind of neat that we'll be able to actually do something here. But yeah, we have another Creek level. So once again, going to be jumping from leaf to leaf, from lily pad to lily pad, while avoiding fish and vicious Venus flytrap plants. Also, look out for those monkeys. Those monkeys have a habit of, like, kind of knocking you around if you're not careful. Also, if you see the purple plants start to move, wait a little bit before you jump, because otherwise you're going to get uh, snacked on. And that is just not something you want to happen. Definitely not at all. I'm going to wait for this to come back. Thank you. Various visions. What is a hitbox? 
So you may have noticed, there are some lily pads down there. Well, this is actually an annoying little secret that's in the original version of this game. But uh, if you hit this little box right here, you'll... Something will basically happen. Usually some boxes will form. And in the case of this level, if you go back... As you can see, there's some boxes down there, so that's basically what that did. So we have to go down there, and then jump back up. Kind of a sneaky trick, because you kind of have to th think, well, there's something odd about those lily pads. I can actually walk back across if I need to. And then sure enough, you go back. Oh, okay, so that's kind of what those lily pads were hinting at. It's kind of a weird thing, but that's what the game developers were going for, at the very least. Okay, I'll wait for that. So there we go. Once again, another bonus level. I think we have everything so far. Get 30 freaking boxes here, so. Come on. Come on. Just jump up here, please. Thank you. Some of the more annoying secrets of not just this game or remake, but of all the uh, PS1 trilogy games, is sometimes when you actually have to be off-screen for a while to either find something or maneuver yourself along a uh, dangerous path. They definitely got in the habit of adding a lot of secrets like that in these games, and not really a huge fan of that, but what are you going to do? Also, there's the last box of this level. We have everything, so now we can actually complete this. Get our nice clear gem and then jump in the exit portal. So that is clear gem number four. We have 22 to go. <laughs> but that is okay. We will get all 26 gems no matter what we do. But first, we're going to have another boss fight here. This is Ripper Roo. Ripper Roo is a boss that I really hated when I was a kid, whenever I did get a chance to play this game anyway. He's a crazy little guy. You can tell from his straight jacket that he's pretty crazy. Uh, but overall, he's not too difficult. Uh, you need to basically find a way to explode a TNT crate by him. And he moves in pretty much the same pattern every single time, so... You can generally manipulate this in your favor. This should get him this time. So he's going to change his pattern right here. Now he's going to go in a bit of a T-shaped Tetris block. I don't know if that's going to do it. Nope, not quite. I believe he goes in a diamond shape. Ah, oh, damn it. And there we go. Not too hard, but, uh... They'll have to basically adjust the platter pattern in your favor. And next up we have, oh boy, the Lost City. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, the image of the clear gem is a little bit different. Which means... This is actually going to be our first colored gem, so again, to reiterate here, in order to get the colored gem, which is basically the clear gem of this level, 
You have to make it through the entire level, break all the boxes, and do it without dying. The only dying you can do is if you actually die before your first checkpoint like this. So that's acceptable because no matter what, you're starting from the very beginning. And you can also fail bonuses, but um, if you basically miss a box or if you die after the first checkpoint, you're going to have to redo this entire level. And there's a couple of stipulations, too. Like, there is a uh, Nitrous Brio bonus stage in this level. And if you destroy a token or if you miss a token, then once again, you'll have to uh, restart the level on that right as well. So again, just a lot of stuff you have to keep in mind when going through this. And obviously, most importantly, just don't die. Whatever you do, don't die. Especially once you get to that first checkpoint. Once you get to that checkpoint, the game is on, so make sure you do what you can to uh, get things moving. Also, I believe uh, there's an uh, exclamation box up here. So make sure you jump on those boxes as opposed to just, like, spinning into them. So make sure you do that. And yeah, here we go. First checkpoint. So this is where we can no longer die. But yeah, that box I just jumped on right there, that's the box that gets formed by the exclamation mark. So make sure you find that. For these bat sections, only thing I recommend is play carefully. Don't take any unnecessary risks, or otherwise you will die terribly. And that is just not something you want to do, so just play conservatively and you should be fine. I want to say a lot of the, um, I think with the exception of maybe one of them, you can generally take the uh, colored gem levels pretty easily. Like, these are all levels you can just kind of, like, move at your own pace and kind of wait until you think you have the, like, the correct jump you need to make, for example. Like, there, there's no need for you to get, like, super cocky or super risky with, like, any of your jumps. Just, again, play conservatively and play smart. And you should be fine. Okay, so right here, there's the portal for the Embryo bonus stage. I'm gonna destroy this lizard first, because screw that lizard. And I believe the box for the final Brio token is right here, so... Uh, be careful, make sure you don't spin it away from you. So we got that, and now we have to complete this stage. And remember, like I said before, um, you can fail these bonus stages. Because failing bonus stages do not count as death, so don't stress it too much if you have some issues with this. Especially like these, because these are actually pretty difficult. Oh, give me that extra life, damn it. <laughs> okay, boom. Wait, what the? Ah, damn it. Unfortunately, by doing that, I did lose my mask, so unfortunately I'm going to be having that absent from my inventory. Although, funnily enough, I think the biggest danger in the next part of the level is not really the enemies, it's more so the, uh, just falling in a pit and dying, but still... You always want to have that mask, just in case. <laughs> and there we go, got all the boxes, we're good to go. So now we can continue on the rest of the stage. So these platforms can be pretty finicky. My only advice is basically, these platforms ask as teeter-totters. So if you get on one edge, it'll tilt 
down towards that direction, so try to kind of get to the middle as soon as possible and just kind of, you know, play conservatively once again and then you should be okay. I'm going to lure this uh, lizard over here so I can jump on it. The lizards, uh, in my opinion, they kind of suck. Like, I hate the lizards. Once again, the bat's going to play safe here. Got the checkpoint box. Okay, next we have these. These can kind of be a little dangerous. These, I think, move at the same speed, so this isn't too bad. Thank you. Okay, once again, another lizard. Oh, okay, not only another lizard, but I believe, yeah, you have to get this box, so... There you go, got that. Okay, we got some more bats. Again, gonna wait this out. Now, I want to say this lizard right here is the toughest part of this level. I'm gonna wait for a good pattern here. Go time. There we go. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about this, guys. Feeling pretty good about this. I think there's going to be a lot of boxes in here, so once we get through here, we should be about done. Yep, 33 boxes, so I think we're pretty much in good shape here. This level is kind of annoying, though. I almost had it, but, uh. Also, look at all that wump of fruit I'm losing. <laughs> That's a lot of lives when I'm done, though. That's a lot of lives, not gonna lie. Pretty excited about those lives. Um, let's see. One thing you can do is you can try to, like, break some of the boxes that are above you. Damn it. Okay. I might try to break the boxes again. Okay. That kind of works. We did it, guys. That was pretty intense, though. Not gonna lie. Let's see, with 33, I think we only have, like, uh... Yeah, we only have three more, so we're about done. Once again, one of these teeter-totter platforms. Another one of the teeter-totter platforms. Okay, this is a case where, once again, jump on the lizard. What?! <laughs> As you can see, I have all the boxes, but it's not breaking open. Nearly perfect, but you died. Uh, God. Welcome to Crash 1, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Crash 1. Whoa! Damn it! Okay, I made it back here. I have a mask. Let's do this. Oh, that 
that was close. I span into that guy, which was not good, because he does have, like, some weird hitbox when it comes to, like, spinning into him. But I don't care. I'm gonna make it back here. Yes! Give me that gem! We're done. Oh my god. I wouldn't mind as much, but that's just a really, really long level. <laughs> I had two very long attempts that basically took me to the final, like, lizard section. And, of course, got screwed over by the hitboxes and the, uh... Just nonsense of those enemies to begin with, and... It was pretty brutal, but hey, we beat it. We're done. I think I'm also going to go ahead and stop here. I'm not sure how long this video is, but, uh, you know, mid-20s is what it should be about, and that's kind of where I'm fine with ending this. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time when we continue more of the second island. Uh, not sure when our next uh, colored gem level is going to be, but I want to say it's not for a little while, so... At least we don't have to worry about any no death runs for a bit. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Later, folks.